morning, everyone. This is um, the movie I promised about uh, or regarding the explanations of the, of the Atom worksheets. So here we go. Number one, uh, this, by the way, is the some more Atom questions side. And I'm going to try and write down below because I didn't leave enough room for me to write in, the, in this area up, up in here. Okay, so here we go. Number one. Oops. Maybe here we don't go. I've got to change this over here. There we go. All right, so two electrons in the same sublevel, but in different orbitals. So if they're in different orbitals, uh, you kind of need to think about it in terms of the N, L, M, S. So I'm going to write a, an example down here. So if you have N there and L, if N, just for example, if N equaled 3, and L then could equal either 0 or 1 or 2. And then you have an M quantum number, um, which for L equals 0, M could equal 0 only. And that's negative 1, 0, and 1 for uh, the M values when L equals 1. And for L equals 2, it's negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Uh, the actual numbers here are numbers that uh, came from Schrodinger's wave equation, but the significance of the numbers to us is that the number of values equals the number of things. So for example, this is a sublevel, it's a quantum number, so the number of values means that there are three sublevels. Now remember they are S and P and D. Those are the three in the third energy level. And in the S orbital, or S sublevel, there's only one orbital. In the P sublevel, there are three orbitals. In the D sublevel, there are five orbitals. One, two, three, four, five values of M. So now if the, they're in the same sublevel, that means they're in the same one of these. So, if they had a, suppose, suppose they had two electrons in just this sublevel as an example, in the 3P sublevel. So the numbers they'd have in common would be N, because the N would equal 3 for both electrons. They'd have L in common if they're in the same sublevel, if they're in the 3P. And I just made that up, pretend they're in the 3P so we can talk about a specific electron. So L would equal uh, the same, right? L would equal 1 for them, and both electrons would have that. Um, the third quantum number, could they be in the same? They're in different orbitals, it says. So the question says, if you go back up here, it says in different orbitals. So if they're in different orbitals, L or M cannot be the same. So, um, so for the first electron that we're talking about, we might say M is equal to negative 1. So for the second electron, N would equal 3, L would equal 1, but M could not equal negative 1, maybe 0, maybe positive 1, but it can't equal negative 1 because it says in the question that the electrons are in different orbitals. So this is electron 1, and this is electron 2. So electron 1 has three, the N quantum number in quantum with electron 2. They both have the L quantum number in common, but the M has to be different. Could the spin be the same? Could you have an orbital or an electron in this orbital spinning clockwise? And could there be another one in this orbital also spinning clockwise? And the answer to that is yes. So they could have up to three orbitals in common. All right. Now the last electron in the element arsenic. Arsenic ha or has uh, this is number two now. Arsenic has this electron configuration, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, 4p3. I'm going to just focus on the highest energy level, which would be the fourth energy level. And... Uh, the five electrons that are in the outer shell. Remember that you can determine the number of electrons in the outer shell just by counting the column that it's in. In this case, 
we can also see that there are five electrons in the outer shell. What's another name for the outer shell? It's called the valence shell. Okay, so the five electrons in the outer shell. So the last electron would be that one. So what are its quantum numbers? Well, it is in the th um, fourth energy level. So n equals four. It's in a p sub level, so l equals one. So there's the answer to your question. L equals one. However, we might as well go ahead. So m equal would be equal to negative one or zero or one. So the m quantum number would equal one. And since that's the first electron in, we're going to arbitrarily define it as clockwise. Okay. So technically, these, the negative one, the zero, and the one. Um, depending on your orientation uh, are kind of subjective so we could say this is X Y Z for the axes so we, we're going to say the positive ones on the Z axis but sometimes people say the positive ones on the X axis so uh, that's, that's a little bit subjective All right, uh, because X Y and Z depends upon your orientation which way you're looking at it and that brings us down to number three so if L number three, if L uh, is equal or n equals three, what's L going to be? Well, we already did that. So go back up here. If n equals three, what was L? Zero, one, or two. So in the answer number three up here is zero, one, and two. Okay. So now given a particular atom that L, given in a particular atom that L equals two, what are the possible values for M? We've done that too. It's right here. Right, so negative two, negative one, zero, one, two. What do we call an, a sublevel that is represented by L equals three? And how many orbitals does it have? Well, let's go down here. So if N equals, to get to an L equals three, N has to equal four. So L would be zero, one, two, three. M for L equals zero, I didn't, I'm going to change the way I drew this, so hang on just a minute. So L could equal zero, one, two, or three. If L equals zero, M equals zero, then of course negative one, zero, and one. Negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two, five orbitals. Negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, seven orbitals. So now if you go back up to this one, let's see. So what do we call that? We call it the three, remember what S, P, D, and F. So it's called a three F. And the number of orbitals that it has is seven. You can count them down here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. The last electronic carbon is placed in what sublevel of what energy level? All right, so carbon is uh, 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. That's the configuration for carbon has six electrons. All right, so this is in what sublevel, what energy level? So if we go with our convention, there's our S, there's our S, there's our P. Negative one, zero, and one. Hit the wrong button. There we go. So where is this electron? This is the last one. So it is in. Okay, it's in the second, so the question says, went back to look at the question, less electron in a carbon atom is placed in what sublevel? Well, it's in a 2p, so the p sublevel of the second energy level. So p of level 2. What are all the quantum numbers this electron can have? So we'd have n, l, m, s, n is 2, l is 1, m is 0. Why is it 0? 
Well, it's zero because if you look at it, it's the second of the three orbitals from of negative one, zero, and one. Negative one, zero, one. And then S is positive one half because it's the first electron in. Okay, iron, paramagnetic or diamagnetic. Okay, so if you look at the electron configuration of iron, it is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d6. So then you take a look at 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, 3d. All right, um, all these are full. The d's, when you start putting electrons into them, oops, one, two, three, four, five, and then the sixth electron right there. So if you looked at paramagnetic, you find that it means having magnetic properties, and what causes un magnetic properties would be unpaired electrons. So iron has lots of unpaired electrons. See, one, two, three, four. These guys are all full, so these are all paired electrons. They don't count on paramagnetic. They're, if it, something has paired, all paired electrons, it's diamagnetic. Okay, so iron is magnetic, which we call paramagnetic, because it has several unpaired electrons right here, and that gives it magnetic properties. So what element, what element in row 3 would you expect to be the most paramagnetic? Well, it would be the one with the most unpaired electrons. That's number 8. So in row 3, that element would be the one in the P3 configuration. Because in row 3 on a periodic table, there is no D sublevel. So you'd expect it to be P3. So what element in the third series is P3? And having three unpaired electrons, the element's phosphorus. So you'd say here it is paramagnetic. Four unpaired electrons. In the third row, it would be phosphorus. Why? Three unpaired electrons. Okay, now helium has two electrons. What quantum numbers define each other, each one? All right, so helium uh, has a uh, 1s. So n, I'm going to go ahead and put n, l, m, s. So for helium, n is a 1s2. That's its whole configuration. Boop, done. So n equals 1, l equals 0, m equals 0, s would equal positive 1 half. It would be spinning clockwise. That's for the first of these two electrons. For the second one, n equals 1, l equals 0, m equals 0, but s can't spin, the electron can't spin the same way, so it'll be negative 1 half. So how many quantum numbers are the same? 3. Okay, then that brings us to number 10. The last electron for manganese is placed into what sublevel? I'm going to go back down and use a picture I made previously. And that's this one. So I'm going to erase the iron part of it right there. Put that orbital back in. Manganese has 25 electrons. So instead of ending in 6, it's going to end in 5. So it's going to have 5 unpaired electrons. Okay, so the last one would be this one. This one. All right, that's this last one right here. Okay, so what sublevel is that in? Well, the last electron is in the 3D. See it down here, 3D, 3D. So, how what quantum numbers would describe this? Uh, could define this electron? So you would say in. L, M, S. It's in the third energy level, so N would equal 3. It's in the D sublevel, so L would equal 2. Remember the uh, SPD right here, D equals 2. It's in the last of the M orbitals, so M goes from negative 2 to positive 2. So since it's the last one, we'll just say that it's positive 2. And it's the first electron in, so we're going to say that it spins clockwise.
the second electron in would spin counterclockwise. So there's your four quantum numbers. All right, now we're going to go back up to number 11. An electron has a value of n equals 5. What are its s quantum number possibilities? Well, the s quantum number is a spin, so it can either be positive 1 half or negative 1 half, and that's it. Uh, number 12, if n equals 4 and l equals 1, that's 4p. There are three orbitals in the 4p. Negative 1, 0, and 1. So this is in the first orbital, so it's right here. So that's in the 4p sublevel, the first orbital, and it's spinning clockwise. Since it's spinning clockwise, it is the first electron in this orbital. In order to have a negative 1 half, you'd have to go single, 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 and then pair. So this one right here would be the negative 1 half spin. So you wouldn't have that until you get to the fourth electron in that particular sublevel. One, two, three, then when you start to pair up, it's four, and that's negative one half. So its spin is clockwise. All right, so what element is that? So if you're looking at, that's going to be in the 4p1 position, so what element is in 4p1? To do that, you need a periodic table. So we go over to the handy-dandy periodic table. And we look right here. It's, that's, four, that's 2p, 3p, 4p1 would be gallium. So that element would be gallium. Doesn't ask you what the element is, but doing always want to do more. <laughs> We'd say it's GA. Okay, number 13. What is the wavelength of an electron moving at the speed of light? One one hundredth the speed of light, sorry. Okay, for this one, I'm going to pull out a calculator. Actually, I'm going to stop it right here for, for just a minute. And uh, we'll, we'll save this movie, and then I'll come back and do the rest of this page. Because I, the problems could get a little bit long, and I'll make the video pretty long. So I'll stop here and come back in just a minute.